Would it be possible to use a Raspberry Pi and a camera module to detect and read license plates of moving vehicles in real time? I just had to know the answer to this question, so I set out to find out. And then this happened. Oh, uh, so it's for a YouTube video. I'm going to show you how to use a Raspberry Pi with a camera V2 module to detect, read, and store vehicle license plates without using any sort of remote cloud services. Instead, we're going to use a deep learning model running inferences locally on board our Raspberry Pi 4 because I like to run my models the same way I like to live my life, on the edge. But really, this is one of those videos where you're just gonna get a massive download on how to spin up and generate your own custom deep learning models using state-of-the-art technology. So sit back, strap in, and enjoy the ride. And if you're unsure about the utility of some of the topics we're gonna cover in this video, then allow me to share a quick anecdote. See, back in 2019, I was personally contracted by the largest parking services company in the world to help them prototype some license plate detection software in some of their testing facilities. Now we're talking about a NASDAQ publicly traded company that was interested in better understanding how some of this emerging tech could be leveraged within their business. Business. And because I was positioned as an authority on the topic, I was able to be that consultant for them. And that's why I like to classify tutorials like this as knowledge assets. Because if you really internalize them and understand the key concepts, it can later be monetized when you deploy this knowledge against business opportunities. Now, the easiest way to achieve this would be to outsource the computer vision component using a cloud service such as Open. ALPR where we could just send them the images, they can analyze them and send us the results. But I think that deploying a custom model on the edge is going to give you a much better fundamental understanding of how all this works. Also, Open ALPR isn't free anymore. So maybe they should name their company Closed ALPR. Just a thought. But you know it is free hitting the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And with that, let's get started. These are the technologies that we're gonna be using to creepily track people's license plates and invade their personal privacy. I mean, build out our license plate detection system strictly for academic research purposes. First, we're gonna use our Raspberry Pi as our compute to capture images and run the machine learning inference on the edge. Next, we're gonna use Google's AutoML to train a custom machine learning model to detect license plates. We will then deploy this deep learning model on the edge and call it using TensorFlow.js. Once we localize the license plate, we'll use Tesseract to perform optical character recognition to determine the alphanumeric content of the license plate. Finally, we'll use Visual Studio Code and Node.js to stand up a basic web app to tie it all together and deploy our application. And of course, we'll also reveal if I get attacked by an Uber driver and this becomes my last video ever. So for those of you who don't know, this is a Raspberry Pi single board computer about the size of a credit card. Today I'm working with a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B, but this tutorial should work on all the major models including the Zero. I'm going to be assuming people are coming in cold, so we're going to start at the very beginning by configuring the Raspberry Pi. So the first thing we want to do is set up our hardware. So I'm going to use a special case that houses both the Pi and the camera. This chassis ran me about $11, so I'm going to insert the Raspberry Pi into this housing. Next, we need to add the camera ribbon. So let's locate the camera module port. Next, we're going to gently pull up the edges of the port's plastic clip. Next, we're going to insert the camera ribbon, ensuring that the connectors are facing the contacts in the port. Finally, we're going to push the plastic clip back in to secure the ribbon. Next, we're going to mount this on a tripod as we QA and debug our program. Also, quick shout out to Wandering Bear Coffee for hooking me up with some cold brew. Without that, I'm pretty sure I'd still be in bed right now. Next, we're going to format the operating system onto our micro SD card. There's a few ways to do this, but we're going to use the express method so we can just breeze right through this. We need to use an adapter to insert our micro SD card into our computer. Okay, so we're just going to come over to raspberrypi.com and then we're going to navigate over to software and then we're going to download an application called 
imager. And the purpose of this application is to allow us to flash the Raspbian operating system to a micro SD card. We're gonna go ahead and install this, drag it over here. Open up applications, select Raspberry Pi imager, open. Okay, so we wanna open the advanced option menu in Raspberry Pi imager. So we do that on Mac by selecting Control Shift X, and that will bring this guy open here. And what this lets us do is, as we flash the Raspbian operating system to our micro SD card, we can pre-configure it with things like our Wi-Fi network and things like that. So when we first start our uh, Raspberry Pi, it's immediately gonna connect to our network, which is gonna allow us to uh, connect to it over SSH and things like that. So I'm gonna enable SSH and we're gonna set a password and we're gonna configure the wireless network. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and save this. So we're gonna choose our operating system and we're just gonna use the recommended 32-bit Raspbian image. Okay, we're gonna choose our storage device. Be careful here, because you do not want to format the wrong drive. I have a 32 gigabyte micro SD card. It's that guy right there. Then we're gonna go ahead and just select right. Okay, so the card is finished formatting. That process took about two minutes. Now let's take our SD card out of our computer and insert it into our Raspberry Pi and get this show on the road. Or rather, get the Raspberry Pi onto the road so we can detect some license plates. Okay, now our Raspberry Pi is booting up. So I could directly connect my device to a keyboard and mouse, but personally, I'm a bit more fluent using the command line on my Mac computer. So I'm gonna remotely connect to the Raspberry Pi over SSH. To determine if our Raspberry Pi is in fact connected to our network, and by network, I just mean our Wi-Fi network, we're going to ping it. So I'm gonna do ping, and then the default host name is raspberrypi.local. So it's returning ICMP traffic. That means it's on the network, which means we can connect to it. So we're gonna connect using SSH, secure shell. So SSH, the username is pi, and then the host is raspberrypi.local. And then, okay, so I have some, um, anytime you connect to a new remote device, it creates a host in the host file. And it's saying that there's some conflicting hosts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the host file and I'm gonna clear it out. So I'm just gonna do vim, which will open the file. And I'm just going to delete these guys, save that, and we're gonna reconnect. Now it's saying, do you wanna establish a fingerprint? We do, so we're gonna say yes. And then the password is the password that we defined in the advanced configuration. So I'm gonna go ahead and type that. Um, if you didn't define one, the default is Raspberry. Okay, so now I'm in my Raspberry Pi. One thing I like to do is elevate myself to root. Uh, so you do that by doing sudo su dash. So now I'm a root user. Let's go over to the desktop, home Pi desktop, there it is. All right, and just to prove that uh, we are in fact connected um, to our device, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and create a file. So I'm just gonna do touch test. And now we can see that on the desktop on the monitor. And I can go ahead and remove it as well. And we can see it go away. So we're now programming our Raspberry Pi over the air using the Wi-Fi network. And this is just the way I like to do it. You could always uh, connect a keyboard directly to the Raspberry Pi, but I find it a little cumbersome. Now we can start updating the operating system. So don't ask me why, but I've found that you still need to manually set the date. Uh, otherwise, things like Chrome uh, will reject the SSL handshake um, because the certificates don't. Um, match up. It doesn't need to be perfect. Um, so the time is set. Now let's update the packages and operating system. So I'm going to do apt update. 
this will read the packages and update them. And then we're gonna do apt full hyphen upgrade. Just so we're gonna install Node.js. Node.js is gonna be used to support our web app. And then we're gonna install TensorFlow.js. And pip is a Python package manager. Python comes pre-installed on Raspberry Pi. Python is pre-installed on pretty much every operating system these days. All right, let's install Vim. Vim's a text editor. Apt get install Vim. And then let's also install Nginx. All right, so let's test the camera. We're gonna use libcamera, which is the newer package. And yeah, we'll just call this test. Okay, so if we wanna see um, this image on our computer here, we have to have a way to pull that up. Okay, so there's a couple different ways we could get this image to show up on our computer, but I'm thinking when, when we downloaded Nginx, it stood up a basic web server. Like if I curl um, localhost, if I do curl localhost, it's returning a website. This is a very basic website. Um, and so what we could do is we could actually insert the image into that. So, and then I think we could pull it up on our computer. So actually let's, let's try that first. So in theory, we can do raspberry pi dot local and it should pull up that website. Okay. Yep. It's, so it's pulling up the website from our raspberry pi and I could prove that by if I go ahead and change, um, or I can just go ahead and delete the title, right? And then, okay. So why don't we just reference the image here? So I'm gonna do, we should be able to just do IMGSRC. Uh, okay. And then I think what you can just do is local, and that's just test.jpg, I think. And da, 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 da. Yeah, let's try that. Okay, so there it is, but let's go ahead and size it a little bit. So we should just be able to do, um, height, oops, uh, height equals 700. All right. Okay, and then, <laughs> That's the picture because I was holding the Raspberry Pi and I was shutting my eyes. So, all right, cool. So the, the camera does work. Okay, so we are halfway there. And if you've made it this far, then congratulations and feel free to give yourself a pat on the back. Okay, break over, get back to work. Okay, so our hardware is working well. Let's go ahead and create our deep learning computer vision model to detect license plates. Okay, so I'm gonna create a directory here called data where we can store some of the um, test data and um, keep our files. So I'm gonna just do make dir data. And um, this directory here again is available in the description below, but this directory is going to be the application itself that um, you know takes the images and, and, and uh, returns the results of the machine learning model and stuff like that. Um, we don't need to get into that quite yet. Let's start by just creating our uh, our TensorFlow.js machine learning model. So we now have a directory called data and what I'm going to do is download a directory of license plates. Again, link in the description below. Okay, so you can download the data set from Kaggle or the link is in the description below. I've also stood it up on Google Cloud Platform. But what the data set consists of is uh, just a bunch of license plate images, right? Um, and so we can use this to train our model. And as you can see, they're not just um, uh, American license plates. There's all different kinds. Um, actually, these are mostly European, it looks like, but that one's, um, so it's all different kinds of license plates. Um, okay, so that's what the data set consists of. Uh, and now we want to use AutoML. So I would recommend um, setting up a Google Cloud Platform account and um, 
let me just show you real quick. So this is a Google Cloud Platform. It gives you access to um, their entire suite of products. Uh, and we want to use the computer vision product, right? So we're gonna go to the uh, navigator here and there should be, let's see, do, 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 compute, serverless, storage, database. Where is AI when you need it? All right, artificial intelligence. Um, we want vision. Go ahead and click vision. And let's see here. We want auto ML vision. So we're gonna get started. And we're gonna do new data set. Let's call this license plate detection. So, so there's different kinds of models, right? Um, you could have a single classifier, like a binary. Does it? Does the image contain something? or does it uh, represent some sort of pattern or something? You could have a multi-classification. So say for instance, you wanted to be able to classify a plant by a picture of a, a leaf. You could get oak tree or fern or what have you. Um, and then there's localization. So um, can you take an image and then draw a bounding box, elastic band around uh, a particular entity concept? So people, dogs, cars, what have you. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to do object detection. And then it's telling me I should use underscores instead of hyphens. So I'll do that. And we're going to do create data set. All right, so this is where AutoML is, is, is not as intuitive as I wish it was. But basically the way it works is we need to upload our license plate files to cloud storage, which is just a hosting provider for static assets. So we're gonna upload the images to a directory. And then what AutoML wants you to do is create a file that says, for every particular image, for every URL for an image, can you tell us if it should be used for training, validation, or testing, right? You don't wanna use the same image for training and testing because a model can easily, um, tune to an image and then it'll test 100% on that particular image. You want to train on um, a randomized sample of the data and then you want to test on a mutually exclusive other randomized sample so that you can see what it learned from the training set is that is that broad and able to generalize across new data right because because when we take this out on the road and start scanning license plates that's new data hasn't seen those before and it needs to be able to perform let's get the first part out of the way the first part is we want to upload our images to google cloud storage so i'm just going to go over here and we're going to go ahead and do that and I, what we're doing is we're just uploading the data um, the directory that we downloaded from kaggle right um okay cloud storage and we want to create a directory that is public, right? So we're gonna call this demo license plate. We're gonna continue. Region shouldn't matter. Storage class doesn't matter for what we're doing here. All right, and then they're gonna go come to configuration. And we, we want this directory to be public. So all right, license, demo license plate, permissions, add user, all users, and then um, we're gonna do view. Um, cloud storage, object viewer. Because we just, we want folks to be able to we want AutoML to be able to download these images, essentially. That's basically what we're doing here. They're two different products. They connect over probably like some sort of service account. Um, so we're gonna do save. And see now it's saying, okay, you wanna make it public? Yes, allow public access. Okay, cool. So now see how it will say, well, it still says not public. Let's re reload this. All right, now it says public, cool. So let's upload our images. So I'm going to do upload files. And again, we don't want to upload the zip. We actually want to upload the all the images. 
So I'm just gonna select them all. And these will inherit that public permissions level. Okay, so I wanna show you one more thing is, so if I wanted to pull up one of these images, or in this case, AutoML wants to pull up one of these images, um, they have a public URL. So the public URL, it follows this pattern here, storage, Google APIs, and then demo license plate. Um, and so you could actually just throw this in here and you'll get the image. Um, but how you reference an image uh, when you're using something called GSUtil, which is it's basically Google's tool for um, uh, Google Cloud Platform commands. There's just another URI and it's just GS colon forward slash forward slash and then it just follows the structure, uh, the hierarchy. Um, so, so that'll just be uh, relevant when we, um, when we indicate this information to AutoML. So, okay. So it wants us, so all it wants us to do here is upload a CSV file that looks like this. Now, see how for the for this, um, uh, in this example uh, CSV, you can see the annotations, right? We're not gonna upload the annotations. You don't have to upload the annotations, but you do have to denote if a particular image should be training, validation, or test. Um, now I've already set up a file that will do this for us. Um, so we have a file here called training.csv. Yeah, we, we set some of the data for validation. We set some of the data for test and then a lot of the data we put unassigned. And when you put unassigned, AutoML will do a random sample of that data. And we did this specifically because we wanted to make sure that we got enough test and validation data in there. And if you do, un if you do unassigned, it, it does a percentage that wasn't adequate for what I wanted. Um, but the only thing here is that we need to change out is this path is not relevant, right? Because I'm not using this Alexa translation. The path that we have for our GSUtil URLs is um, this guy right here. Now, I think the file names are the same. So all we want to do is go ahead and you're going to want to do the same thing based on how you named this directory. Um, or even you could probably reference my directory if you really wanted. But anyways, um, we're just going to do a search and replace, right? So we're going to say Alexa translation, replace that with this, replace all. And then that should do that. Uh, that should do the trick on that. That looks good. We're going to go ahead and click save. And then this is going to be the, um, the file that we upload to AutoML. So you don't have to actually upload the, fi the files to AutoML. You upload them into cloud storage and then you just reference them in this weird CSV file that they want you to use. Um, funny enough, they want the CSV file to also be on cloud storage. So let's actually go back to this directory here and let's upload the CSV file. Let's do, it should be under data, or there it is right here. Okay. Uh, so they want you to upload the training file. Let's see. Okay. And, oh, well, actually, I think you can just select it over here, right? So we're gonna do browse. We're going to do, where are you? demo license plate and then the training file should be at the very bottom that's really annoying let's search for it here okay uh, okay all right and let's see if that doesn't take it should take but again what is this file doing this file is just adding a row for each image and the images have this name here and then it adds a bunch of commas because we're not we're, we're not adding the um, these signify the coordinates but we're not going to add the coordinates we're just doing the um, the data type should it be test validation or um, training the location based on the file that we uh, the, the, the location of the cloud storage that we're using and then just a bunch of commas since we're not adding the um, the labeling. So you could do it yourself or you could reference the file that I just created. And let's see if this doesn't take here. It should pull in all the images and then it should mark them properly based on the um, designation that we set. Okay. 
Okay, so it's still importing the images and we'll just give it a second here. Okay, so that took a couple minutes, but it looks like it took. So um, we can see all the images here. That looks pretty good. And so none of them are labeled uh, yet. And so that's what um, we need to do. And that's where AutoML is really nice. So basically, AutoML has the data set, but it doesn't know where to um, target that localization uh, because we haven't um, we haven't provided any uh, any um, coordinates, right? All right, let's set up our label first. So it doesn't matter what we call it. License plate doesn't like that. GCP is all about the underscores. All right, license plate. All right, so let's come back in here now. Uh, we should be able to do this, right? Okay, license plate. And technically, there's another one too, so we can get both of them. And we're just gonna do save. So, so what's happening is AutoML is finding the coordinates here and it's adding that metadata to this image. It's adding that annotation. And we can just keep flipping through here. We certainly don't need to do this for every um, every image, um, but we should give it like probably 30 at least. AutoML is very good. It doesn't need a lot of data, um, but we should give it, you know, the more we give it, the better. So, okay, so now that we've labeled a bunch of the uh, images, if you come over to train, it'll give you information about what you have. So we have 26 train uh, images that are annotated and had the training label. We have nine that have the validation label and t uh, six that have the test label that were annotated. So we just, we just annotated 41 images. Okay, so let's go ahead and train our model based on the labels that we've provided. So I'm going to call this demo license seven thirty. Okay, so we want our model to be deployed to the edge. Download your model for offline mobile usage. Continue. Uh, let's see here. I don't think the latency matters that much. Let me think about this for a sec. Yeah, let's do higher accuracy. I don't think these are perceptible. And we're gonna just do one, one budget hour. All right, and I mean, it says it'll take several hours, but it should just take, you know, one hour ideally. All right, so if we click data sets, we can see that this is still loading and the status is it's running training model. So we'll just wait for that to finish. Okay, so this directory right here is our application that's gonna tie it all together. Um, and, but currently this is on my Mac computer. We want this quote unquote application, and it's a web application, so there's HTML images and there's the, gonna be the TensorFlow model and some JavaScript and stuff like that. We want this to run actually locally on the Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to turn this into a zip file and I'm gonna download it to the Raspberry Pi and then we're going to open it and run it on the Raspberry Pi. So. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. So I'm just gonna open a finder here and I should be able to just navigate to um, that directory. So it's gonna be under here, license plate detection. All right, so again, this is the application, right? So let's go ahead and compress it. And then what I think I'll do is I'll just upload it to Google Cloud Storage and then download it to the Raspberry Pi from Google Cloud Storage. Right, so I'm gonna go over to, there's probably an easier way to do this, but uh, I don't wanna fiddle with that right now. So 
Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, we want one of these public directories. And we're gonna upload a file. We wanna upload the file that we just created, this guy here. All right, it's taking a second, there it is. All right, so we want the public URL, so I'm gonna copy this. And then, all right, so this terminal is actually in our Raspberry Pi, right? So in theory, I can do wget on this zip file. And I should be able to download it to the Raspberry Pi, decompress it, or extract it, and then run it. And wget, by the way, just downloads any public URL. All right, so now we wanna extract this file. Um, it's gonna extract with the same name. Let me rename it so to something easier. Uh, let's just call it files. Oh, actually, am I overthinking this? Okay, so we now have this directory here. Okay, everything's there, that looks good. Again, though, I don't like, the directory is too long, so let's get rid of, actually, let's get rid of files, and then let's rename this to just um, app. Okay. Cool. All right, so um, technically the application is on the Raspberry Pi. Um, Let's try this. All right, you know how we went to, so we still have a server that's serving up these files, right? And so we now have app, technically we have app, HTML, and then index, right? So, let, so we should be able to do this. App, HTML. Okay, I think it, I think it technically worked even though it didn't show anything here. Um, yeah, this is the application, so this is good. Okay, cool, so, 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 we're, we are, so we're viewing the application that exists on the Raspberry Pi, but we're just viewing it with our uh, remote Chrome instance here because it's easier to do that. Um, but the question is now, like, how can we easily edit these files, right, and make changes and stuff? So the way we're gonna do that is using VS Code. All right, there's an app, there's an extension called Remote SSH. I'm gonna use that to connect to, to pull up that, dire that app directory that's actually on the Raspberry Pi, hence remote. Okay, we're gonna do connect to host, do Raspberry Pi. It's asking for the password. Okay, it's saying we're connected, so let's try this. Um, we want to go to var, dub, dub, dub. All right, we're going to the location that we stored this, right, app, yep. Okay, so now we are connected, like check this out. Okay, so, you know, I could, I could put in here test, right? And then theory, see? So now we, we are developing, you know, from the Mac computer, we're developing um, remotely on the Raspberry Pi, which is exactly what we wanted, exactly what we wanted. Okay, so it looks like our model has successfully finished training. So let's go take a look at it here. All right, let's take a look at the evaluation. Okay, so recall, precision. Th this is a hard one to um, try to evaluate the, the efficacy because <clears throat> it's not just a simple categorization, right? We're actually um, creating the bounding boxes. Uh, and so like, it's hard to deter determine what the exact right answer would be because um, you can draw a bounding box that's like a little bit 
off and that's actually still okay. So anyways, let's not um, dwell on this too much. Let's go over to test and use. What I'd like to do is I'd like to run a novel prediction and see um, how the bounding box works, see how it works. So let's go ahead and do this. We're gonna do deploy model. And we're just, what this is doing is this is just gonna stand up the model as an API that we can hopefully send an image to and get a response from fairly quickly. Cause I just wanna see how accurate this model is. Okay, and so now the model's deployed and what's nice about deploying it right here is we can upload an image and it's gonna run the model against the image and it's gonna take care of um, interfacing and labeling and all that stuff. So we can basically just test the accuracy of our model very easily in the UI here and then I'll go ahead and remove the deployment. But um, let's actually go through that exercise. So I need to download an image of a license plate that it hasn't seen before. Right, so I'm gonna do uh, US car license plate. I'm just gonna grab something off, off um, Google here. Um, I'd like to get it like on the car, right? Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Let's get more granular. Let's do Florida. Um, and again, I want it on the car. All right, let's just, let's just do this. Let's not make it more difficult than it needs to be. All right, open image in your tab. And um, all right, let's just go ahead and save this image. So South Carolina, and just throw it on my desktop. Okay. And let's just give this a shot. So we're gonna come back over to here and let's just run it against that. So, ooh, look at that. Not bad, <laughs> it's funny, it got the uh, blinker. Um, but this, this is great, look at that. Um, so, I mean, you know, we could download, we could train it on more, hmm, I'm, I'm thinking we should train it on more data. Um, or, see how it's more confident that this is a license plate than it is with this? We could add a threshold, and we could say the threshold must be greater than like 75 or something, right? Um, so there's different ways to tackle it. I mean, if you want to do this the right way, we should probably train more than like whatever it was, the 50 images that we labeled. That's not 50 images. It's, it's incredible. It can even make that work with 50 images. Um, you know, you usually do thousands and stuff like that. So um, why don't we, let's see here. Um, let's try one more to get a better feel. So let's, let's No kids, nice. All right, uh, let's do license three. Give this a shot. So it's pretty good. It's pretty good, 96% um, here. So I don't think we need to gild the lily on this one. Let's go ahead and use this model. Um, we don't want to keep our deployment up here because keeping an AI model deployed is a little pricey. So I'm just going to go ahead and do remove deployment. And we're going to download um, the flat file that represents this model. It's typically called a, uh, a .pb file or a dot, uh, I think it's like a, a graph file essentially. So we're going to go ahead and do that. All right, and it wants us to drop it into um, into cloud storage and then we can download it from there. So that's fine. So let's go find our um, uh, folder that we set up here. Here it is because this, this folder is public. We'll just drop it right in here. 
It wants us to put it into a bucket in US1 Central. So let me just check real quick and see if I don't have one. Um, do, 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 do. Where are you? Cloud storage. Um, am I using US1 Central anywhere? I am not. Okay, that's kind of annoying. So anyways, it wants us to put it into US1 Central where the, where the, where the ML vision model is. So let's just go ahead and do that. So um, auto ML, auto ML license, continue. Um, nope, US1 Central, very good. should matter all right so now we got one in us1 central again we want to make it publicly available so we're gonna do all users permission is for cloud storage um, cloud storage view access allow public access all right and now we should be able to make this work all right so it exported let's go take a look Oh, because I have a filter on there. Derp. Okay, so there it is. Um, okay, so that is our model. Let's see what it actually consists of. Um, all right, so it's a JSON file. Okay, we don't really need to uh, concern ourselves with that much, with, with all that. Let's go ahead and do download. Actually, you know what? We don't even, we, we, we want to download it to the Raspberry Pi. So, all right. So it looks like there's a couple different models. Um, um, I'm going to create a new directory, right? Uh, it's going to be called, oh crap. Um, okay, new directory. And then we'll just do call it new model. Um, perfect. Um, and then what we can do is we can go into it. So new model. All right, and then we can just grab these file, these four files. I don't have to make it more complicated than it needs to be. Um, we're gonna use wget. Okay, there's one of the files, but we need the others, right? So we should be able to just change the name. So now two of three three of three and then what were the other file names um do, do, dict.txt and model.json so we should be able to just do dict.txt and model.json okay so now we have everything uh, model.json okay perfect and we have our new model here. So now this is the information that um, TensorFlow.js needs to, um, to run the inference. So when I said that we have an application, this is the application. Um, and what it does is it, we, we, we define an image here. And I have a bunch of test images. So the images of one of the uh, license plates. So this is the test image, cars1.png. So we put that into an HTML element. These JavaScript files are just uh, dependencies. And we're doing the inference. Inference is when you run the machine learning model against a new piece of information and you uh, log the output. That's called inference. We're running the inference uh, using the JavaScript runtime, TensorFlow.js, as it's called. Um, but in order to like depict the image, we are using Canvas. Canvas is the way you can manipulate images and stuff like that, so it's perfect for that. Um, and we're also loading up our model. Um, now we're loading up the old model here, so see app model model.json. So let's actually do uh, the new model. And so we're grabbing the image and then let's see here. All right, so let me run you through how the application works. Um, okay, so there's a very basic HTML page here. And 
on the left side here, you're, you have the base image, which is going to be the image that our Raspberry Pi camera snaps when we're presenting a license plate in front of it. It's just gonna continually keep taking pictures and it's gonna stuff the image into here. And then tensorflow.js runs client side. And this page is also set up to um, use something called live.js. So anytime the markup of this page changes, like anytime a new image comes in, the entire page reloads. And then tensorflow.js will evaluate this image, find the license plate, and then use Canvas, uh, JavaScript Canvas, to crop out the license plate. So that's that's the model that that's the AutoML model. That's the license plate localization that we created. The second part is taking this and converting it to alphanumeric, which is uh, OCR. And I began using Tesseract JS because it seemed like it would fit the bill for what I'm trying to do. But what I found is it's not very accurate. Tesseract JS wants you to uh, run filters and like contrast and do a bunch of pre-processing before it can become accurate. And frankly, I just don't want to do that. So I also recruited uh, Google Cloud Vision OCR and I found that that is like a million times more accurate. So you can see it's all running here. So we took the base image, we cropped the license and then Tesseract.js ran against this and you can see how it didn't quite get it, right? It thinks this little symbol is an O, and then it thinks the M's a W, it got the N, but then it thinks the ones are L's, and then the Y, the two. So it's all, it's just not quite right. But you can see the um, Google Cloud Vision gets it perfect. And so, um, so we use both of them just so we can like compare, but basically the Google Cloud Vision is infinitely more accurate. And Okay, so that's how the front end of the application works. Now, how do we take pictures and push them into the HTML here? So we have a, um, th that's where Node.js comes in. So we have a, a single Node.js file called image capture that what I'll do is I would just run it from the command line and it's recursive. So it just, as long as you're running it, it keeps taking image images. So it'll snap an image, and then when that image is ready and everything's been uh, determined, like it, it's run the models and stuff, it'll snap another image, and it just keeps doing that repeatedly. Um, and you could, if you wanted to go crazy with this, you could have it take like more frequent images and all that stuff. But um, just for the basics of this, uh, it just keeps taking images. So we have a function here called take still, and it leverages the Raspberry Pi command line utility called libcamera, which is what we were using before. And then it just writes the image locally with certain uh, resolution parameters. And then once that is done, once that, that function finishes, we run another function to uh, run the Google Cloud Vision component. And then we reference that here. We send it the local image and we say, hey, um, find the text, essentially give us the text. And then once we have the text, we, there's a little bit of pre-processing here, like was anything detected? No, then don't do anything. And then a little bit of uh, formatting of the data, but that's not, not, no heavy lifting here, just very basic. Uh, so once we have the license plate from Google Cloud Vision, the Node.js goes to the index file and it writes it into the HTML, so it rewrites the HTML. It goes into here and it puts it uh, right here. And so it rewrites the file using FS file sync and it replaces. And, uh, and, then, and then because the, um, this file is listening for changes, it will reload. It writes the cloud vision results into the file and then the file reloads. And because it's always writing the same image here, this realtime.jpg, um, the index file always just references the realtime.jpg right here. So this is always gonna be named realtime.jpg and it just gets overwritten each time. And each time it gets overwritten, the page reloads and then Tesseract reloads and tensorflow.js reloads and it reprocesses. When we run the node.js script, it just keeps taking images. 
and it keeps, and then in turn, the client side application keeps running inference. And you can just hold the camera in front of a license plate and it'll eventually run the inference on that license plate. So that's how the uh, script works. You can see it's just, this is the logging the output right here. Okay, so I just wanna outline what we got going on here. So um, my phone is creating a hotspot that my computer is connected to and the Raspberry Pi is connected to and then it's uh, physically connected to this touch screen here. Um, so these are all in the same network. Um, this VS Code um, workspace is actually control, it, it's connected over SSH to the, um, to the Raspberry Pi. And um, those files that I'm editing are actually being edited right on board there. So what I'm thinking is that we can, um, we can run our program and I'm gonna output the, um, the app to the monitor there so we can see in real time. So check it out. And we can also control the, the screen using uh, VNC here. So, so check it out. We're gonna open up the app here. You can see, you can see it's opening over there too. And let's go ahead and restore. All right, so we got the app, we got the app. All right, I'm gonna try to do this with one hand. So we're gonna start the script. This is the app. All right, see? Working. Try another one. Working again. Working again, see? And if you like this video, then you're gonna love my video covering how I mined Monero for 24 hours on a Raspberry Pi. Check that out here. And as always, thanks for watching.